So here we are. Um, okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michael Markowski, and welcome to my studio here in Vancouver, British Columbia, Canada. And today we are going to be looking at and recreating a painting by one of my all-time very favorite artists. He is one of the most important artists in Canadian history, and his name is Cornelius Craighoff, or Craighoff. I've heard his last name pronounced a few different ways. So let's get right to it. I'll show you the painting that I want to make today. This is, <laughs> I love this painting. This is called A Habitant Drinking. A Habitant is a, uh, uh, I guess was, I don't know if there's anyone who would consider themselves a Habitant today. Habitant was a, uh, generally a Quebecois person, usually like a farmer or peasant person, someone living outside of the big city and uh, was one of the fa most favorite subjects of today's artist, Craig Hoff. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably call him Craig Hoff all the time, although again, I have heard Craig Hoff a number of times, but it's just, <laughs> I'm still getting over my cold, which I've had all week long, so it'll, I'm just gonna resort to my default lizard brain throughout today's episode. Um, so anyway, th I just love this painting. It is, um, it's, you know, I was looking, it's not in, in sort of this big book, which is probably the, the, the most recent um, monograph uh, published about this artist, uh, which is not entirely surprising. Most of his paintings, in fact, let's take a look right off the top, are, are uh, maybe a little bit more complex. And so I had to kind of look around you know, I've wanted to, to 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 focus on this artist as part of this master study series for a while, and I was just like, well, you can see this is pretty typical for uh, Craig Hoff's work here. These um, landscape scenes with often five to twenty different people inside the scene who are often. There's multiple little things going on in different areas of the painting, and almost, I would say 80% of them also take place during the winter, where there's lots of snow. Here's a self-portrait of him. It's funny because all of the images that exist, of which there's only a couple of self-portraits and a couple of photographs that exist of him, he always looks, he looks very stern and serious. But I find like almost every one of his paintings are they're quite silly and fun and playful. Uh, one of the terms I I hear often in referred to him is this gaiety that there's these figures are just kind of being you know silly and there's like snowball fights or people uh, falling off of chairs, people drinking too much and getting in a tussle or uh, there's so there's. There's a lot of comedy in these paintings, and it's funny that the, the images of him are quite serious, which made me think a lot about, you know, the way rock stars are, and are uh, musicians are often photographed. You know, they're always very serious, and yet then you see them in an interview and they're laughing and they're silly. Um, like I was just watching a documentary about Metallica, a band that I'm not particularly a fan of, but one of those YouTube things I got on in the middle of the night. And, you know, they're, all their images are like, these are hardcore heavy metal guys, and they're angry, and they play angry music. And then you see them being interviewed, and they're laughing, and they're silly and playful. And I think it's not too far off to think of Craig Hoff as a rock star. I would even venture to say that Craig Hoff is the closest thing we have to the very first rock star in Canadian history. And we, he's a contemporary of another artist we looked at a few weeks ago, Paul Kane. And they had similar approaches to painting, although Paul Kane is known for going all the way across Canada from coast to coast, essentially. Whereas Craighoff stayed mostly 
um, in his at, during his most productive career in and around Montreal and Quebec City, although he was originally from uh, Holland, from Amsterdam. So I'm just going to quickly show a few more of these images here again. You see horses pulling sleighs. There's often the dog that's running alongside here. People holding on um, while they're going fast. And, and these are all very... Um, they're, they're, they're almost mythical scenes of, of, uh, of a Canada, especially today, that, that seems kind of long gone. Although I think many people who grew up in Canada remember some of these same scenes. You know, if, if you were fortunate enough to live, um, you know, in the country, then this probably is not too far outside of, of your uh, uh, area of experience. You know, skating on natural lakes and rivers. Um, this is definitely an anomaly in his work here. Um, and he also did paint a number of paintings of indigenous people that lived in and around Quebec City because there were some reservations in those areas and he would venture over there and do portraits of them and some of those paintings also are are problematic in the same way we talked about the problems in Paul Kane's work and if you're I'm not gonna go through that whole discussion because we spent about 45 minutes of it at the top of the Paul Kane episode we did two Paul Kane episodes at the very beginning of the first Paul Kane episode we did on um, uh, what was it the the John Henry Lefroy that that's the painting because again uh, some of those images are quite exploitive and were he would re just like Paul King would sort of reconfigure a few things to make for a more exciting or sensational type of image because obviously the people that were buying those Im those paintings of indigenous people were not indigenous people themselves, but rich white people who wanted something to maybe, you know, get a few snickers out of their friends, their rich white friends who would come to visit them, right? So, um, again, so they're always perpetuating these these myths of like the stoic uh, chief, you know, these which are very problematic stereotypes. Um, okay, so let's uh, that's a real. Let me see, just his quick biography. Born in 1815, uh, died in 1872 in Chicago. So he came over to Canada, I think in 1843. He, he actually came to the United States, uh, worked in New York City, joined the military in New York, fought in a couple of skirmishes, uh, and then immigrated with his wife to Canada to Montreal. They stayed in Montreal, I think, for about 10 years, and then moved to Quebec City for about another 10 years. And then he sort of went a few times to Europe and then settled in Chicago where he died, where he retired and then died. Um, anything I want to... He's, you can see here, here's all of the collections of uh, within Canada where his artwork is on display. And I think these are just a few of them. Pretty much every major museum in Canada has at least one painting of his on display. I don't know if that's by chance. Um, I think it's probably because it's, he, again, if you think of him being really the first major star artist, rock star, because you know, recorded music wasn't around by then. And a lot of these art galleries being formed around the turn of the century, shortly after he passed away, it would make sense if you were opening a museum in Calgary or Vancouver or Hamilton or wherever else, you'd be like, well, we've got to have a Craighoff painting. Because, I mean, he's like synonymous with Canadian painting. So we would have to have one of, of him there. I, I, anyway, I just think that's really interesting because there are a number of other Canadian artists who are, especially today, have far eclipsed the fame of Craighoff, but whose art is mostly in one or two different places. Like Emily Carr, for instance, almost all of her work is in the collection of the Vancouver Art Gallery and the Greater Art Gallery of Victoria. 
I mean, obviously there's a few in in Ontario, but they're not as. And the opposite would be Tom Thompson. You know, almost all of his work is in in three museums in Ontario: the National Gallery, the AGO, the Art Gallery of Ontario, and the McMichael Collection in um, is it Clean Plainsburg, uh, just sort of an hour north of of downtown Toronto. So, almost a lot of artists have their work sort of spread or you know, in one or two different locations, Craig Hoff has had the fortune to have been collected across Canada. I just, that's just one thing that, as I've been thinking about this, is like, that's that makes him pretty unique in Canadian history. Uh, I want to let you know that there's a private Facebook group, slowly loading here, uh, just for people who are painting along with me, I would encourage you to upload your version of today's painting to the Facebook group, join the Facebook group, obviously, and then I think it's this Saturday, I'll be doing a feedback feedback episode where I'm gonna take a look at your artwork and give you some good old fashioned kudos and some constructive feedback to help make them even better. Most of these, there's very little for me to say except way to go. Um, but if you're interested in hearing what a professional artist uh, might have to say about your work, feel free to join the Facebook group. Okay, so. I'll also let you know that there's the image that we're gonna be painting and then there's an outline for today's painting. And there's outlines for a couple of other uh, Cornelius Craighoff paintings on a Dropbox folder, which you can access, it's free. Just click the link in the description below. You can print this off and I'm gonna transfer it onto a canvas here in just a second. You'll see that there's also an image for tomorrow's painting. And tomorrow's painting is Portrait of Jerry, which I think is, I love this painting. It's this dog that appears to have captured a rat. Um, or, I think it's a rat. I was at, When I was first looking, I'm like, is that a fish? Or what is that? <laughs> um, and then there's also another portrait of another habitant um, that's in the Dropbox. So let's take a quick look at this here. If you click on that Dropbox link, you'll see that there's um, over I think 60 paintings in this series that we've already done here we are all the way down here and it gives you an idea of the next 30 or so paintings that are coming down the pipeline if you're interested to know what we're going to be doing over the next couple of months all right so over the next couple of months we're going to spend uh, we're about six or seven classes looking at some of the great art from South America from Brazil Mexico uh, Argentina we're going to be looking at a number of paintings by artworks by Walt Disney. Uh, we're going to be looking at art from India and Iran. Uh, we're also doing a whole week dedicated to Pablo Picasso. So, and we got a Van Gogh special for Halloween, um, and then even the 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 famous Guy Fox image that's uh, David Lloyd the create the artist from v, from Vendetta. That's also to help celebrate Guy Fox Day. If you've never heard of Guy Fawkes Day, well, we'll talk all about Guy Fawkes Day. <laughs> so let's uh, let's jump right into today's episode and make today's painting. So I'll put these images for tomorrow off to the side, and maybe we'll look at this book perhaps as we go. So. Um, my goal is usually to try to do these outlines ahead of time so we can just zip through them, but it's been a bit of a, a difficult week. We're just being, I've been sick, my wife was sick, not quite as much, but our daughter was also sick. We all, we both thought we had, we all thought we might have the COVID, so we went to the hospital and nervously waited for the results on that. Thank goodness everyone is fine, but that's still, but you still then have the, the regular cold and like, ah, oh, my goodness. Um, okay, so what I'm using here, I've got some carbon paper and you can buy this, uh, you know, at your art supply store, you can order it. There's a link for, for an Amazon um, link in the description below. Uh, I got this actually from a, the, just the dollar store down the street from our house here in Vancouver. You can also get them at 
you know, fabric stores because people will use the same material to transfer images onto, for like patterns onto clothes. So I'm not going to do all of these lines as, as I, I, I never do anyway. Um, so I'm just going kind of the rough outlines. You could eyeball all of this too, and that's the way I used to do these episodes. I used to just uh, kind of almost do a, a drawing exercise at the beginning of every every episode, which I still sometimes think I should be doing anyway. But it meant that sometimes those the first uh, hour of an episode was spent just drawing and. I have done a whole 40, 40 episode long uh, how to draw series so here on YouTube which is also free and uh, I was just getting some messages earlier today where people love that series so it's really cool for me that I did that like a year and a half ago and people still find it really helpful so if you're a, a drawer or, or if you're a painter, I really think knowing a little bit about how to draw will really take your paintings up to the next level. So, um, let's see. I'll be done this in about one minute, I believe. Also, I use the same piece of carbon paper over and over and over again. This might, this is probably again like the, maybe the tenth time that I've used the same sheet. So you don't have to be using them and throwing them out every after every tracing you do. They they can be reused many many times. Okay, let's do. Oh, I, I'm gonna finish that oval shape. I just want to move that carbon paper around and then if you're worried that your your outline like this is a little bit sloppy just take a look at the original and you'll see that look how kind of jagged this edge is. I imagine it was done like that because it was probably in a frame that had a, a circular bound, like a f circular frame around it so it might have actually hidden the 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 rest of the painting that's what i think might have happened but i'm not not sure so cuz um, yeah <laughs> it, it's interesting circular frames and paintings were quite popular. There was a, a long period of time where paintings that were not circular but more oval shape were were really um, on vogue. That tradition has almost entirely disappeared. Uh, I also say there is the signature down there. I just I'm not gonna. It's a little bit small. If I wanted to do a signature, I could maybe do it really big on the bottom. That could be fun. Okay, so we got that on there. Let's peel this off and get to the painting. Now, I've been trying to think about the way that I want to approach this. I think I'm just going to do my standard warm yellow to get started. I, I have been thinking about modifying this and, and going to maybe a more traditional brown or like this would this would be probably pr a pretty standard here like your yellow ochre uh, burnt sienna burnt umber lots of artists use you know brownish kind of colors as a foundational wash on their painting i just like how simple this warm yellow is and this i just condense all the the remnants of the ends of my t tubes of paint into these little jars so I have them rather than just throwing the tube of paint where I can't squeeze the last little bit out. Okay. So this is the only time I ever use water in my paintings. And 
We're gonna we'll probably be using a bit of uh, glazing fluid today to do some of the 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 soft textures on the face. Okay, so let's just take this warm yellow, quickly apply it over here. It's gonna seal in the pencil marks and give us this nice glowing uh, color that's gonna come through throughout the rest of the painting. And especially on this one, I just have the, it just, you know, it makes me think of, you know, this, this fellow who's having, I don't know, maybe a little bit of brandy or something and his cheeks are getting a little bit rosy. <laughs> and uh, you know it seems like he's having a having a good good old time so you know this the little bit of warmth in this painting seems conceptually particularly uh, <laughs> uh, apropos for this episode all right so I was just putting some paint on the the sides as I like to do just to I always think that the sides are some of the most important parts of the painting. When I was in art school, um, I had a friend of mine who, because I used to actually really pay attention to the sides of the painting, and, and I remember a, a really good friend of mine, I just saw him in Calgary a few weeks ago when I was visiting out there. He would refer to them as like, uh, like cake decoration. In that, like, you know, a cake is not just the top of the cake and, you know, the happy birthday, Joanne, or whatever. The sides are also a really important part of the of the cake. And that's the way I also thought about my paintings, too. And I always found that so strange that so many artists just, for them, it was not even an afterthought. It wasn't even a thought at all. Um, so, I was, what I want is I want people to when these paintings are hanging up, especially because most people don't frame paintings these days, um, that they get curious and they're like, oh, that's interesting. It's There's yellow on the side and there's drips of blue and all this kind of thing, but the painting is red. Like, whoa, that's... So it, I think it's what it does is it invites uh, people to look at the painting a little bit closer because if they see yellow on the side, and other little things and they think oh maybe there's more to this painting than what I see on the surface which is what we want people to think we are we want we want people to want to investigate to dig further okay I see a bunch of people in the chat here how come this is there we go there's Deborah uh, Deborah says, "Hi everyone. This habitat reminds me of a gnome. It does, does totally right. This red toque here flopped over the side. Like it remind. It does make me think a lot of like a hobbit or or someone out of the Lord of the Rings or something, right? From the Shire." <laughs> uh, Eleanor says, "I thought the same thing about the painting." And Deborah says, "I am going to enjoy this one. Me too." So it's still a little bit wet. Um. I think I'm gonna blow dry things because we could. I want to talk about his biography and, and things while we're actually painting, so we'll just kind of speed things along a little bit here. Okay, so now we've got a nice dry surface. The edges are still a little bit wet, but that's not so important, right? Um, a little 
little things on the surface. Just wipe that away. Let's look at the original here and just think about how we're going to proceed. So I'm going to wait pretty much until the very end to do this color around the edge. It looks like that color, it looks a lot like one of the, oops, the skin tone that we see in the face or the, what we call the local color. Like I see this color basically here. So we'll probably have that that color left over, although we to, there's a lot of space to cover, so we could probably have to mix a little bit more of it. Um, but not only that, I would wait till the end just so I can paint whatever I want in the center of the painting. And then if I uh, uh, make any kind of mistakes or you know there's little bits of whatever, I'll just easily paint those out. So I'll just wait till till the end. And also, you know, you could certainly um, put any other color here. Like this, you could, I mean, you could, I'll, I always really invite people to play with your painting. You know, if you wanted to, to put uh, a, you know, Where's Waldo striped hat on here. Uh, and instead of a wine glass, he's holding, uh, I don't know, a, um, uh, his favorite novel or it's a, an iPhone or something uh, you could certainly play with that you could put things in the background there could be palm trees and behind here and it's like greetings from Florida in the background this area here could be candy cane colored barber pole striped polka dots like Yayoi Kasuma I mean you can really go wild there's this painting is a little bit of a blank slate. We have this fun kind of character here. And, you know, we've had a few of you do really fun things where, you know, put beards on characters, glasses, sunglasses. You know, that, for some people that would be sacrilege. But, uh, you know, I, I have a pretty open... You know, again, this is supposed to be an introductory painting class. It's not like we're making these paintings to... Uh, exhibit or sell necessarily but you certainly you know this is in the public domain it's been about 150 years or more since this painting was made so it is you you can certainly go knock yourself out let's get some paint on the canvas and as I do that I'll just think a little bit about um, <clears throat> you know color so, you know, really, this is a fairly straightforward painting. And, you know, we don't really have much in the way of a background, uh, which is going to simplify things for us quite a lot. Let's put some paint on the palette. Um, there is... You know, and this painting is actually looks like it was done with a relative speed and confidence. You know, he clearly perfected his his approach, and he could. I bet you he could make a painting like this in in uh, I don't know three or four hours. I bet, like in the in the time that. I do my clumsy version of this painting. I'm sure that he would be able to have done his complete finished masterful version of this painting. If you're wondering what colors I'm putting on the palette here, I've talked about this many, many times in 120 previous episodes, but um, all of the, the links to the exact colors the brand that I'm using. Oh my goodness, that's way too much. Uh -huh. I usually say put about as much paint you'd put on your toothbrush um, in here, but there's that's quite a lot. So maybe we'll use this. Maybe we will paint a little bit in the background right off the top and make use of that. Um, okay. <laughs> so how about let's do that right off since I've got all this warm yellow let's paint we'll mix a cool brown that we could put in this area here now as I said you could certainly you're more than welcome to use whatever color you like um, I'm gonna use my big brush that I used the other day or the other day <laughs> the other <laughs> two minutes ago so let's take some cool yellow 
we'll take a bunch of it. And I'm going to take some cool blue. And we'll mix this together and we'll get a nice, beautiful green. I love this green. Right, and if you wanted to just go right ahead and put green in there, this would be a good green. Although I, I, we're going to put a little bit of white in there, and I would probably put white in there as well because even though it's a cool color, if we have a really, really bright, cool color back here, and then this figure, if we paint this figure in the same way we see it on the image on the left, it's, it's still going to want to leap forward in a way because it's so intensely bright. So let's take some cool red and we'll mix this into here and this will give us our brown. And that's great. I think actually I might as well just scoop up more yellow in here since I got so much of it. And we'll put a bit more cool red in here to bring it back to brown um, because there was so much blue in there that it was going green right so whenever you're you know if you're you can modify your brown just by modifying the ratios of these three colors right so that's pretty close you know we could even put more red in here and we're going to put some white in there as well Let's put even more, just to see if we can get close to this original. A little bit more cool red. That's pretty close. We, I think we're probably going to have to do a second coat anyway. So, But this will give us a good head start here. Now I'm using a really, this is maybe too big of a brush. Um, <clears throat> so I'm going to just squeeze a bunch of this paint off and transition down to something a little bit more manageable. And again, don't be afraid to go outside of these the boundaries here because we're going to clean all that up with at the very end. And that color we put down there, at least if we do it according to what is already there, that color is going to be have a lot of white in it. So it'll pretty much cover up anything that we do right now. Sometimes there's little places where light is poking in underneath someone's armpit or like here, but it doesn't looks like that's that's everything. I'm just gonna quickly see if there's any big um, uh, areas of where I've built up maybe a little bit too much texture. That's the only thing that I sometimes drive me crazy because if I got little mountains of texture, then those are always a bit hard to paint over right you got to kind of like summit the peak and then go back down onto the other side okay so that's good for right now I think you know maybe well I was gonna say what I could do later once this dries is, is use a lot more cool red on here the one thing with cool red um, and maybe red in general is is it's often really transparent, so I, I would still see a lot of this streaky stuff. So, if anything, if I wanted to get even closer to that original color, what might have been a good idea was to do this and add a lot more white into it. But 
I don't know. We'll, I'll manage. We'll, we'll make it work. As Tim Gunn likes to say, make it work, people. Make it work. <laughs> that was on Project Runway. I don't know if anyone ever watched Project Runway or if he's even allowed to say that because cause him and... Uh, what's her name? The, the model that is his co-host. They left Project Runway. They started their own show. Making the cut. I love reality television shows. Mostly because I, it's the kind of thing that my wife and I can watch at the end of the night. I don't have to be paying attention. If I gotta get up and do something, I'm not really like, oh no, I don't know who got kicked off the show this week. Oh, let's go. I'm like, oh yeah, sure, let's just watch the next one, whatever. <laughs> I see in the chat, Donna says, I was watching the replay of Fort Edmonton, a Paul Kane painting we did a few weeks ago, and I was thinking, gee, Michael's breathing sounds horrible. I've never heard him breathing hard in class before. And then I realized it was my dog snoring. <laughs> that's, that's great. That is pretty funny. I like that a lot. Um, that, that's also a relief to me as well. Because, <laughs> um, you know, again, I have no idea how things sound often until somebody lets me know in the chat. Like the, yesterday's episode, the first two or three minutes, the sound was all off. Anyway, okay, so let's uh, let's move right along here. We'll we'll um, what should we do next? I think we might as well just I think mix a skin t skin tone here. Oh, Eleanor said it was Heidi Klum. Yes, Heidi Klum. Yes, thank you so much, Eleanor. Yeah, let's mix it a skin tone because we can use that same warm warm brown for the clothing here on his yeah so uh that sounds reasonable i think or maybe even we could mix up a red with some white first i think i'll do that because the we're going to use red and white in the in the skin tone as well let's move to a smaller brush and the reason i'm going to use red and white here is if i just put let's say i'll just do this right if I just put this red here, that's not bad. Actually, that's better than I, th I was expecting it to be. But, actually, not as bad. Um, the only thing is, is it can be a little bit um, streaky. So I am just gonna mix some white into here. And I know it comes off as a little bit uh, pinkish, But it'll just mean when I paint my uh, another layer of red over top, it'll be really, really nice and just a uh, beautiful, rich, warm red. Okay. And actually, let's do this, his belt down here. Okay, you know, and there's, you know, maybe a little bit of red inside this, but I, we'll, we'll think we'll tackle that when we get to that area. Okay. Oh, let's, let's, uh, so let's mix a skin tone, and maybe I'll just, I'll just clean my brush. Because I never know who's watching. Often, most of the people watching these episodes, especially after they've aired, or people that have never seen me before. So if you've never seen me before, this is your first time, hit like, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you know when more episodes are coming. So let's mix a skin tone here. So I'll, maybe I'll just do this right to the side. I'm gonna take some warm yellow, right? And some warm red. We're gonna mix an orange to begin with, right? And any 
skin tone from any human being who's ever lived on planet Earth can be mixed using these same, um, the same formula here. It just is going to, you can vary these ratios depending on all sorts of factors, not just race, um, but age, the lighting that that, that person's in, right? Um, uh, anyway, so you can also see the way that I'm mixing my paint, right? I don't just slop everything into one giant bucket and mix it all together and then realize, oh, it's not the color I want. And then you're really screwed because then you've got to modify those you know, you got to add a lot more, a whole tube of yellow to, to lighten that color up again. So you can see this color is basically exactly what we did. Um, this is the with the cold brown, right? So here's our cold brown, and here's our warm brown. Now, it's probably pretty... It's When we come to browns, browns tend to be pretty close to the neutral core. So they're usually you don't have like a really really warm brown it's almost like it's, it's all, as, as I think about that it's really hard could you make an extremely I guess if you put a lot of red in it or you could make it a very very warm brown and it's also very hard to make a super cold brown because they again they, they if we think of the outside of the color wheel as your most saturated colors the closer things get towards the center, the more uh, this is this is what we call the neutral core. The more they lose their saturation, right? And to get this brown, we took these two colors and mixed an orange, and then went across, literally on the exact opposite side of the color wheel to get this blue. So it pulled that orange towards the center. Anyway, it is. You should see that it looks more orangey than the than the cool uh, brown, which is going to have more of a of a, a greenish quality to it. But it's again, that's really hard to say because we can make a a, a warm uh, a, a warm brown that is very greenish, but it's a very warm green. Anyway, uh, this color is great, but we need to to add some white to this color here. Let's put a bunch of white in here. And then let's just take a look and just see how we're doing here. Okay, so this color could be great for some situations, but if we look at the character, that habitant on the left there, we need a, to add a little bit more warmth to this color. That is color on his face right there is, is a little bit warmer so let's put a bit more warm red in here and now we get maybe a little bit more of a peachy color now I'm not gonna I, I will be making this color even more peachy and more warm for his cheeks you know he's got those rosy cheeks and the rosy nose and lips and everything but I'm gonna do those separately as an as a second like another layer on here so and actually I just forgot I always forget this um, I, you know one of the things like I, I've been painting for over 20 years and I would be more than like what if I was painting this on my own I would just put this color right over the face right over the hands and then I would use my understanding of of, uh, of facial structure and um, uh, <laughs> um, what do you call it? Proportions to 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 do these the details like the eyes and nose. But I again, I always know that 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 can be really difficult for people. And when I've done that in the past, I hear in the chat people going, "Oh my goodness, I'm totally lost!" Right. So what I'm instead going to do is I'm going to mix a really dark color, and this is just my warm red and my cool blue, and those two colors together because they're virtual, not totally, but almost opposite from one another on the color wheel, we get a really dark color. If you want to turn this into a gray, just add a little bit of cool yellow in there and you'll get a gray. 
it'll be really really dark gray but put some white into it and you'll see exactly what I'm talking about maybe mm, eh, maybe we'll do that for his hair actually later on here because we won't use any black in this painting whatsoever so I'm gonna mix this color and I'm just gonna use it to paint these facial features here and how about let's bring up both here side by side so a little bit pixelated and losing some detail there so we'll stay zoomed out and he's got these kind of soft eyebrows here so I'm just these are what I'm doing here is a placeholder I'm putting in these lines so I'll be able to find these details later and you know sometimes this is actually really helpful because I end up using some of these lines afterwards they might be covered up with a few layers of paint but because they're still kind of there they they almost look like gray lines or they're barely visible and sometimes that's enough like so for instance like on his cheek right here let's say I put this line here that line is way too dark at this point in time but if it's barely visible you know an hour later from now that actually could be just absolutely perfect um, so we'll see hairline and ear now this is his beard I'll just kinda dot that same thing with his chin <laughs> these little pursed lips here is pretty funny like he's kind of, this is almost like a caricature right it's it's so funny like the the um, yeah I think that's that's Let's do the hand, I guess, while we're while we're doing this here, because I did the I, I yesterday when we did the uh, Chris Hatfield, I just went right up, right in and put color over there and lost some of the details of the hand, and I I probably could have used a little bit of assistance there because I ended up putting a different uh, hand position on that guitar than the one he actually had in the painting or in the photograph that we were working from because we did the astronaut Chris Hatfield in space playing guitar that's there on the YouTube playlist for anyone interested um, yeah that's that's I think that's good for right now maybe just a quick little line here that's good Anything else that would be really important for okay <clears throat> so I'm actually I'll blow dry this really quickly so that I can paint that skin tone which I mixed up five minutes ago um, without it getting uh, blended into my paint here so I'll just mute this for Okay, so I'm just going to put this brush in the water. Now let's take this skin tone. There's a mixed up, and there should be enough to do, to do this. Now I can kind of paint over this with sort of impunity. And I can be as sloppy as I want. Right, so now I can see all of those lines underneath. And 
And again, I'm just going to go outside of the, the lines a little bit. And I know this right here is a bit of his beard. So, but I'm, it's going to get covered up with kind of gray hairs anyway, but I'm just going to put this foundational color there. In fact, I think it's always a good idea to do a little bit underneath the hair on a head because, you know, sometimes we can see a little bit of a person's hair or their skin, you know, their scalp underneath their hair. So just a little bit extra like that. <clears throat> and that, that is a little bit, you know, it's a little bit dark. And you might say, well, that's kind of strange because don't we want it to be a little bit lighter than that? Yes, absolutely. But we want, this is sort of the color that's roughly halfway between the highlights and the shadows. And so now we can do the highlights on like the nose and chin and forehead, etc. And then we can also do the shadows that are underneath the eyebrows and the nose, etc. All right. Okay. Looking good. Motoring along. So I'm just going to clean a few brushes really quickly here. As always, I clean these brushes again at the end of the night, right? So these, this is, this is just my quick way of, of cleaning. This is my Bob Ross method of banging the, the brush against the garbage can. This is, I'm banging, rubbing them up against my arm, right? My wife and I just started watching that Netflix documentary on Bob Ross that just came out last night. We just we're about halfway through. Um, really good so far it sounds like it's gonna get kind of become a bit of a bummer by the end but <laughs> the first half where the, it's really you know talking about his his life and stuff that obviously I knew before because I did a, whole, a couple of episodes on Bob Ross back in December um, so I kind of familiar with the story but it is some of these interviews are people that haven't spoken about um, the, the the life of Bob Ross really ever. So that makes it a very, very interesting series. Okay, so let's... I was going to do the clothing next, right? So let's... This color for the clothing, like how... I mean, it doesn't have to be that much different than what we just painted. Now that I look at it, I think... Um, I mean, really, it's just a little bit more gray. So maybe just a little bit more blue in here, I would say, potentially. It's a lot of blue, Michael, but uh, let's put some more white in here. It's almost a little much. So I'm just... Now, it's, now I went too far the other way, so let's put some more of this blue back in here. Still need lots of white. Okay, I think that's okay. Obviously, it's going to be much darker over here. But what I always tend to prefer to do is to, if let's, because these sleeves are going to be, are kind of the same, right? The same fabric and same color. So even though one is in shadow, what I would prefer to do would be to paint them the same. Now, that's, I'm not really happy with this color that I put down here, but I'm not too bummed out about, like, I'm going to, We'll just paint it, and then we can modify it later. But anyway, what I was saying is I'd rather paint both of them the same color and then put a glaze over top of one to as a shadow rather than having two very different colors. Because then it's, the potential could be that 
one sleeve looks like it's literally a totally different color in the shadow. And the people are like, that's weird. What, did he, he has, was he like, this character really fashion forward <laughs> and had like, you know, uh, mismatched sleeves somehow way back in the mid, this is like 1853 or so. Right, like that would have been pretty unusual. And then you're, then you got, the conversation has gone off the in some other weird way, right? Um, I'm just going to take a little bit more of a brownish color and paint this on the back of, of the vest, I guess. That there. Now let's use this for his buttons as well. Why not? And as I always say, like, you can see that at this point, I'm very, very loose with, like, the the color. I'm not, you know, I mix the color I'm not so happy with for these sleeves, but it doesn't matter. I just want to get something in, in here. Now I'm just going to use the same color I used for his uh, clothes or his uh, back of his vest for his hair. Throw that in there. Now we just need kind of a darker color. I think I'm going to make this like a, a, a dark, a warm blue, ultramarine blue. Maybe a bit of, almost a bit of a green. We'll see. Okay, so let's... I'm going to take warm blue. And some warm red. Or sorry, warm yellow, obviously. <laughs> we'll mix like a bit of a brown here. And you can see now it's it's this really dark greenish color. I mean you could make it a purple again, you could change all these colors as as you wish. Um, this is just sort of a nice little a dark color I can put down and then modify afterwards. And you can see that hmm, the, the his collar on his shirt's white, so I'm waiting till I got all of this done before I even do that because that white I can use to cover up any mistakes or sloppiness right so I'm always thinking put that whatever needs white let's use that near the end of a particular um, uh, layer painting session or um, I don't know how, how would you describe that yeah because I'm going to go back to the background after I got all this done, and we'll, we'll get that nailed out. So I would say it's quite likely that if he was making, if he, you know, that what we're doing right now is not too far off what Cornelius Craighoff would have done himself. Now there is this vest. I'm just going to paint right over, actually I'm just going to paint over this collar of his vest. And I'll do that. That's not going to be too hard to find that, so I'm just going to paint right over that. Save myself a little bit of time. You can see I'm not concerned about these buttons and getting those that shape entirely right either. How about, I'm going to also just lightly... over this cup can you see how like when I painted it I kind of painted 
some of these shapes, like his vest, let that dry just a, even a little bit. And that way when I go back, it still kind of almost leaves like a ghost image of that line there. So it almost like acts as a bit of a clue for myself later. Okay. That's pretty good. Maybe should I do a little bit of white on the collar right now? Let's do that. Let's just... I think that's that's good for right now. I was, you know, one might be tempted to start putting color white on the eyes and everything, but I'm, I'm it'll be easier if I save that to a little bit later. I mean, I could do it now, but I want as much freedom in this kind of stage of painting as possible. Okay. So how about let's do the background, this color again, and let's we'll mix a, another cool brown, or, or the same kind of cool brown, but we'll just maybe modify it a little bit. So if you recall, this color here was our cool brown, and I'm going to need a little bit more cold red. Here's my cold red. Maybe probably a bit more white. Not bad. But we don't want it to be too red because otherwise it's going to compete with that the toque that he's wearing. So we're gonna let's make it a bit more brownish. Put this here. Obviously, it's we're going to put a shadow in, or really, what we're we're going to do is mostly just sort of brighten up a few places. We can do that as a glaze. Trying to get all these little streaks out here, which are kind of driving me nuts. Not bad. Okay, so let's blow dry that. And then we'll do a quick little glaze 
with a bit of white in in behind him. Okay, uh, Paula asks in the chat, are we going to paint um, two figures tonight? No, I know there's two figures in the on the drop box, but uh, um, unfortunately I'm just, uh, I don't think I would, I will be able to make it standing through two episodes. So I'm going to take this white and, or two paintings, let's put some of this white here. And then I'm going to use a bit of glazing fluid. And I'm going to wipe this extra excess paint off of my brush. I'm not going to clean it all the way off, but I want we're going to do a glaze with this color. So I want this to be a bit thin. Okay, and then I've got my, that's a little bit wet. Ideally, you want your blending brush, or we call mop brush, to be kind of dry, as dry as possible. So. Give you an idea what we're doing here. Actually, I'm going to put even more glazing fluid in there. The glazing fluid is going to make it be really thin, and it's also going to slow the drying process down, which is what I want because I'm doing kind of a large area here. And anytime I'm glazing with large areas, it makes me a bit nervous because there's a lot of space to cover. So what I'll do is I'm going to blow dry that again, and also my blending brush, I want to try to just dry that off and get any excess paint off there. I'm not going to put it in the water because I want this to be nice and dry. Okay.
Okay, so let's just, we'll do another pass at this. I'll show you. Again, we'll take this. Maybe we'll glaze up here. It's kind of brighter. All right, and then we'll try to quickly soften that up. Try that off. Let's go back down here. I guess there's a little bit up here too, right? bit of a harder edge, but I'll do that with some um, darker paint here shortly for his shadow. So we'll blow dry one more time. Okay, uh, let's take a look here. Um, let's get this much brighter. I think one last little pass here. drives me crazy when I see that kind of stuff. <laughs> also makes me think maybe we do a bit right here. a little bit dangerous what I'm just doing here because I'm now this area yeah 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 I got to I got to blow dry that again <clears throat> whenever you're using glazes especially with acrylic paint if you have these little areas where it's a little inconsistent and you've been you've painted for like you know you even saw me just like 20 seconds the best thing to do is just pause blow dry it and then just try to touch up that area if you start trying to scrub and fix the part that's wrong then it's going to make that worse and worse and worse and then the panic level starts going higher higher and then you scrub more and scrub and it just it's just a spiral of
Okay, so this will be, this is, I mean, I should say, I hope this is the last time I fiddle with this area. This did a bit better there. Yeah, I think I went too far with that. Not bad. It's, it's I mean, I can always let's let's put this darker area down here in. So, let's actually we'll take this color. Maybe we need even a bit more of it. Warm or sorry, cool blue, cool red and cool yellow to make this more cool red. Blue. And let's just get some of this glazing fluid in here. I guess he did that, oh, yeah, I didn't even think to turn this into a bit of a glaze here, so let's get a bit of glazing fluid on there. Do any of that up here? I think I'll just reserve it for down there. I think. I'm gonna quickly blow dry that. We'll do one little bit more there. Sorry, I thought I had muted it, but I did, didn't mute it. That's sorry for your eardrums. I'm just going to take this brush and get a bit of that color on there, but let's get mostly glazing fluid on there. Expected.
Okay, I'll just soften this edge up just a little bit. Man. That drives me nuts. Okay. Um, instead, let's just make this a bit of a harder edged line in here. Because I'm not going to fiddle with this all day long. Okay, I gotta blow dry that again. So the problem is, is, is that this area is there's a little, there's a bunch of layers of paint, and none of them are fully dry, and so I keep applying paint on top of it, and then not blow drying quite long enough, and then trying to scrub and blend, and the painting is just going. No, I don't think you're gonna get away with that today. No, no, I think. Uh, Oh, okay. So I'm gonna put that aside because that's what I. Whenever I get into a situation like this, and I just keep fighting the painting, the painting is telling me you need to move on to something else. Come back and finish that area. So, and we'll. because it's not going to improve here in the next few minutes. So, I'm just gonna clean off these brushes here. Okay, so let's, um, how about I'll do the hat next, and then we'll do his vest, maybe. So let's get some warm red. I'm just going to take warm red right out of the tube. I'm going to paint that right up here. And then later I'll do a bit of glaze on here to add shadow and that'll be really effective. Now 
there's a bit of this is why I always try to overlap a little bit the paint over the background there's a bit of that yellow kind of shining through so it means I'm just gonna expand the hat a little bit Okay. Oh, and then down here on his sash, let's get that as well. Okay. So, what should we, yeah, should we do the vest? Or maybe we should do his shirt. Well, I wanted to save that until I get uh, this can dry. Man, that is that <laughs> nuts. Yeah, let's do the vest. Okay. So that vest is like, we've, I think, almost a bit of cold blue in here. So I think we can even use this cold, uh, or not, it's not cold, it's a neutral color, this purple, but we're just going to add a lot more cold blue to the mixture. And I'll use a smaller brush. So this is just, actually we'll make a little bit more of it since it's kind of dry. Some warm red and cold blue. And we get this really dark, dark color. I'm gonna just mix it out a little bit further here. I'm actually gonna put a bit of warm blue in there as well. And that will neutralize some of the intensity of that Cold blue, or, uh, yeah, cold blue there. I still need a bit more red to go back in here and deaden that down. Okay. So I think I'll glaze a little bit of lighter color afterwards over this. It'll be a lot easier to to do that than trying to mix many different colors of this darker color here, I think. of his vest is somewhere right here. Let's 
fellow. He's got to be sucking his gut in a little bit, don't you think? Looks a little bit too slim here. Just gonna put a little bit of a outer edge line there to both so I can see where that the jacket buttons up. It also might be just nice to have just a slight bit of that extra different color coming through. button here so let's just put another little spot for that So, where should we, let's do the, what should we do next, let's do his, let's go back to his face I think at this point. So now I think what we want to do, we're going to mix a bit of a warmer skin tone. This one was a little bit darker and more yellowy, but we've got a bit of that. If you look at this painting, we see some of that in here. And so I want to keep, that's why I put it down as a foundational layer. And then we're going to brighten it up. So let's take some, we're going to mix the color again, some warm yellow, warm red, and warm blue. Mix it together and we're going to get our brown. Much, oops, sorry. So I took some warm yellow, warm red, and warm blue, put it in here. Let's get some white. Not bad. I think we need a little bit more white though. to uh, actually I'll go to use a slightly bigger doesn't have to be too small of a brush and then I'm gonna brighten things up a bit of warmth
Now you can see where the light is hitting the top of his face. It's kind of rosy cheeks. It's almost like a little bit of like clown makeup or something we're putting on here, right? Okay, let's do the same thing with the hand. Now you, you, it's I haven't gone all the way to the the, the brightest highlight yet, right? I'm just. I'm building up to that point, so we're, we're going to... Now I'm going to do this, let's, uh, let's I don't need that brush, move that out of the way. Let's do the same thing, let's add just a little bit more white onto here. And I'm also just going to take just a little bit more red back there again, because if I take too much white to lighten it, it's gonna get too white and loose. It'll be, it'll lose, white tends to kind of cool things down a little bit. And So I'm looking for kind of shapes on the face. a little um I guess that's his hair on his beard there hey eh? I'll put a bit of that in okay let's go to back to his hand right and kind of the knuckle up there is gonna get most of the light Let's, uh, let's continue this again. Let's go even more white. Again, put a little bit of warm red in there.
take it uh, a little smaller brush and we'll touch this up in a second. I'll show you what I mean. Um, so this is like where I'm going for really some of the brightest parts on the face. I think we'll we'll be doing a little bit more of this once I get a we'll put in some of the darker parts on the face here in a second. That's pretty good, I think. So what I'm doing when I'm doing that kind of thing is I'm looking at mine and the original and thinking like, is there what is the glaring things that are missing here in terms of light and dark. Well, now we need to get the, the dark, right? And that dark, I mean, we could have painted that face much darker brown as a, as a ground that would come through the entire painting, which is what a lot of portrait painters do. <laughs> Donna says, almost time to change sleeves. I, I, my plan this past weekend was to get a different shirt for for these, but I, uh, I didn't get a chance to do that. That's funny. Um, okay. So let's mix another warm brown. Uh, I need some more warm red. warm red warm blue get this really dark brown we're gonna lighten it up with a bit of warm yellow now we don't have any part of the face that's quite that dark so we're gonna take a bit of the white sort of just mix it into the color we were just using here Probably a little bit too dark, but we'll see here in a moment. In fact, if anything, I'm just going to put a bit of glazing fluid in here just to thin it out. So if I am using a darker color, it's okay because it won't be full strength darker color. that the way that works I just need to let's put a little more glazing fluid in there it was almost a little bit too dark there we go you know like a lot of painting is just managing ratios and it's a lot like baking or something right just getting the 
the right amount of flour and salt and all that kind of stuff in there. And if you've been doing it for decades, it just seems really straightforward and really easy, but for someone who's just starting out, it's it seems like super difficult, right? So I think actually what I'm, I'll do right now is I'm going to paint some of these darker lines on the face. Um, I think I'm just at that point here where I can do that. And I'm just using this same dark brown that I mixed and just added white to for all, everything I've just been doing here recently. of his eyes he's got these very like open face right with these this type of like in the cartooning world like that's a very kind of open happy kind of uh, eyelids right as opposed to if we did it the other way it would look kind of angry and move down the face to the nose. We'll darken these eyelids or the pupils and irises etc later. that in. I'll transition to a different color to do a little bit of the shading on his nose shortly. Let's get his lips here. Okay. 
well, well, I'm just very delicately outlining these lips. You want to be sort of careful how much of that you actually do, otherwise. can look maybe a little bit more feminine. Oh, he's got a little mole right up here. Okay, and I'll also just take this brown and let's uh oh yeah let's get his eyebrows just little bits This is kind of tricky, all this little facial hair. So I'm just gonna put a bunch of little lines. side we'll just repeat this and we're gonna do some white lines over top of this as well right eventually his hat there a bit. Got his ear underneath here. And just sort of just darkening over a little bit of this.
Okay, so now let's just go over these fingers. We still have to do this glass. I just didn't even really think about that. I think it's maybe time we we tackle that glass actually. So that glass, I'm gonna put some warm yellow and some white together. We'll paint the inside of it, the fluid inside. darkening this down. So this is just kind of a darker color, kind of a bit of a gray that I've mixed. I just really all I just did is add some uh, warm blue to this yellow that I've just been I was just applying here. Just for getting the other side of that glass painted in. So let's do. Uh, we'll, we'll let's leave the face for a few minutes. Let's do the. Let's maybe finish. Okay, this this thing. Should I come back to this area? You could see like it was still so wet that as I was painting on here, my hand was picking up some of that. So let me see if I can reactivate some paint on here. bit better. I'll need to let that dry. Just right like crazy. <laughs> oh, oh my goodness. Thank you. 
little bit better. I'm gonna just move on. Yeah, move on, let that dry before I tackle it again. Uh, maybe I should do the back of his vest here, actually. So the back of that vest was just the, basically the color I was using for the face, which is a little bit more yellow in it. See what I'm doing. The so just <laughs> okay. I got a bunch of these gross brushes. It's time to quick clean. You know, I th I'm really happy with with where I am right now despite how I might my demeanor, but I'm really happy with the way things are going. We're gonna keep on lightening up, like we'll do the sleeves here next. And you know, this is exactly what he would have done. Like at, at, at this stage of the painting, if you were to walk into a studio 200, what, uh, 170 years ago, something like that, right? This is, I'm sure, this painting would have looked pretty much like this at, at one stage of, of the process. Maybe he didn't quite begin the exact same way, but this would be exactly where he would have found himself. So let's do his sleeves again. We're going to mix and let's mix a brown again and some more warm yellow. I should see if I can scoop some of this warm yellow from my underpainting. I can use up some paint that otherwise just goes down the sink. I'm just going to put a bunch of white in there. That's actually pretty good. We got this a little bit of a kind of khaki color, which is what I want. Right, just warm yellow, warm red, warm blue, and white. And we use the same color to make the, the skin tones. We just added a little bit more blue. It just kind of takes out some of the warmth the, the, and brings it back down to this kind of khaki color. And actually, I thought it was, that was too light, but let's... I guess we need more white.
That's better. But it, it all required that I had that previous layer down there. Now, I am going to just, maybe you can use this color with less white in it, since it's gonna get darker anyway and it's in the shadow. I'm just going to keep that shadow. I don't like that there's a bit of a couple line striations in there, but eh, you can't always win every one. Win them all, right? Okay. So how about we haven't zoomed out in a while, so let's just sort of just take a look at these two side by side. You know, one of the things... I'm almost tempted to to put a color on this yellow because it's for me when I'm painting it that color is is so bright that it is also um, likely affecting how I'm mixing colors because I see it in my periphery which is always a little bit of the danger of, of having like um, you know, that, that's generally why I like slowly building up the palette. But as you can see, there's marks and it's gotten kind of sloppy all over here. So I'm like, eh, this is a, it's, kind of, it's just a bit of a waste to, to bother painting that when I know I'm just going to muddy it all up. Okay. Um... I take this color. Just kind of fix these buttons just a little bit. I love it. this. This makes me really happy. I'm very happy with the painting. <clears throat> okay. I mean, a lot of everything... Well, let's do the folds on here. So actually, I'm going to blow dry this. Okay, so let's do the folds on his shirt, and we'll darken them a little bit. So let's take um, 
basically just want to dark and make it darker brown. In fact, let's take this warm blue, warm red, mix that side by side here. So it's going a little bit kind of um, purpley, so I'll add a bit more yellow in it, and yellow will counteract the purpleness and bring it back to, to um, its brown state, right? Okay, so that doesn't look too dark, but when it goes on top of here, it'll be like, whoa, that's the dark lines you're putting on there, Markowski. So I'll zoom back in. So I'm trying to give a little bit of, it's, this is fabric, right? So I want to try to recreate some of these folds. Uh, which way should we go first? Let's do fold. There. Let's get this sleeve. I'm just going to keep on going into the shadows and putting these folds in. And I'll I, we can darken the shadows afterwards. So these, these folds here on the outer part of the sleeve, barely doing, because this is where it's getting most of the light, right? You can see I'm also pressing down to kind of vary the th the, the dark, I mean the, the width of some of these folds to show that they're kind of like thicker, or um, not thicker, but uh, deeper, deeper folds in the fabric. Or that the fabric is really bunching up in those that particular place.
Okay, let's move over to the other sleeve here. Speaking of sleeves, Donna. Um, okay, so... Also, I'm trying to curve that up to, to again, reinforce the shape of that sleeve. Right, I'm just eyeballing all this here. I'm not trying to... It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. I think actually I just noticed before I move on, on his uh, shoulder here, So let's just take a look, see how that looks. It's pretty graphic right now. Graphic, not like violent, but uh, but strong lines, which will soften with some glazes shortly. Okay. <laughs> um... Let's, you know, I could actually probably use that color, but just give it a little bit more red for the shadows on his uh, kind of sash here. I'll just use. quite clever just these little lines make it look like it's kind of rolling and folding Do a little bit up here. We'll do again. I'm going to glaze this. Mm, let's take 
the same color. I'm going to put it on the under, kind of, not the underside, but the, just at the bottom, almost like outlining the hat. It's going to give that, the toque, just this little bit of extra dimension. It makes it look like it's kind of thick. It's a thick toque, not a thin toque. Like really, almost everything here from this point could be done with just glazes. Let's, uh, I think I want to touch, do the glass next. Like pretty much, we could do virtually the rest of the painting with one color as a glaze. So darken everything down. Should, I gotta wrap up in about half an hour tops. So, maybe, maybe what I need on the face is a bit more warmth, a bit of like, give them a bit of that blush in the cheeks. So let's take some white and warm red and mix that together might be a little intense on its own, so I'm just going to take a bit of um, a warm yellow and just take some of the pinkishness out and give it a little bit more of a peachy quality. I might even need to be a little bit more red, we'll see. We will see here in a second once we start painting with it. Let's zoom in. Um, a lot of wet paint all over, so I'm just going to be a little mindful of that. that should be darker. These lips. I'm not even sure exactly what's happening with that bottom lip. It's so strange. Um, Brown almost to be 
basically. Uh, let's take this brown. I'm gonna glaze with that. bit more shape to that kind of the bulb of the nose at the tip there. Do that a bit. I like this little bit of reflected light coming back on there. Slowly just darkening a bit underneath his nose. Corner of his eye here. slowly getting darker and darker as I go. I just remember that this process can, you know, for depending on the on the artist could take weeks to do, right? We're trying to get this done and half an hour.
Okay, so I think I'm gonna now... Uh, that's pretty good. Like, I, if I had to walk away from that right now, I'd be fairly happy with that face. So let's just get a little bit of a slightly darker color here. Take our... We'll just make our, our standby dark color. Warm red and cool blue. Get some nice dark color. Mix that in and Let's darken these eyes and that top eyelid. Underneath that nostril there. That one there. Pretty careful without to not go overboard with this kind of stuff. Then everything all of a sudden becomes very cartoony. Not that there's anything wrong with cartoony. I love cartoons. We've done a bunch of cartoon paintings, but uh, it can undermine like all of the hard work you put in to try to make the all the subtlety that we're trying to build in here. So I'm gonna take a bit warmer red. Too bright red there. I've definitely kind of youthfulized him. <laughs> Is that a word? Youthfulized? Okay, so let's go into. Let's make this kind of an orangey. Um, fluid that he's imbibing here. done a bit of <clears throat> I neglected his hand <laughs> uh, Paula says um, looks uh, Michael yours is very close congratulations mine looks like a woman if you find it looks too feminine probably a few things that are happening are the lips might be a little bit too large and too red um, you can also, we're going to put some hair on his, uh, his beard there. That's going to make him a little bit more masculine as well. And often like female faces, artists will tend to smooth them out a lot. Whereas men, you can almost add infinite amount of wrinkles on it and they'll, it, it, uh, 
is fine. I find if you add like just any wrinkles whatsoever to any female face, it instantly makes it look much older. It's just the, so whenever I'm painting, um, so often you even see like when people paint feminine faces, they barely even paint the bridge of the nose. It's often just like little tiny nostrils. A lot of the rest of the face is smoothed out. The shadows are very smooth. Masculine faces tend to have like harder, harsher shadows. So you can even add harsher shadows onto the face. It'll masculinate it a little bit, if that's a word. Oh yeah, I was gonna, that's right. Yeah, let's get a little bit more pink here. Onto this hand. Don't need a lot of it, but. Oops. Let's um let's glaze darken everything down. Let's let's get mix a um glaze. And I see a interesting question here in the chat. Joshua says, Michael, I have a question. How do you define a masterpiece? See since I see people saying that Mona Lisa is a masterpiece, but why is the the Mona Lisa the painting and not the other paintings like the painting you're doing? So why is the Mona Lisa so famous? That's a big question, um, and there, that's a long story. Let me think before I jump into that. Let's I'll start glazing, and then I'll answer your question as we go. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to darken everything with a bit of a kind of a brownish glaze, and I'm going to use this darker color that we've we had mixed up earlier. I'm just going to put some glazing fluid in there. Now it's a little bit purpley, so let's just take a little bit of yellow. Turns into a bit more of a gray color or brown. Come on. Okay, there we go. Now, got a lot of paint on here, so we'll put more glazing fluid. Um, let me see. Let's see how this this mixture created works well, let's start in the shadows so whenever if I have a glaze a good idea is just to go put it try it in one of the darker places so if it's too dark hey no problem because that, that area is supposed to get dark anyway but it'll give us an idea of how it would look elsewhere okay so basically we can just put this this is good. So this is a very subtle glaze. I was thought it would be much more heavy than that. So I'll just put this here for now. And then let's just look at the other arm.
I can all of a sudden instantly start giving some volume to that area. Beautiful. Okay, and I can even now take the same glaze and let's just start going over other parts, let's say this hand. I haven't forgot your question, Joshua. I'm just still a little bit uh, distracted here while I get try to race to a finish here. So, let's do the hat. even do a bit on the face to just continue to pull a little bit extra shadow subtle effects there on the face just really pretty subtle which I like Get a bit of get a little tiny point of light in, on these eyes and just brighten them up a bit. Okay. About the sharpest point you can get. Oops. Whenever you, when you think about this, that adding that little pop of light, that's usually think about like ten and two o'clock on your clock. That's usually where, like, in, if you think of the 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 eye is like a clock, that that's where that highlight is going to be. That's where it's most flattering, anyway. Okay, almost there. I mean. Really, what I mean, let's uh, what else should I do here? Let's just take mix this brown color again. Let me 
bit more cold yellow in here. Come on. go on to this arm Uh, maybe these buttons. Okay, so I mean, really just the glass and then a little bit of uh, gray in his hair. And I think we could pretty much be done there, right? Which is, you know, just a little bit behind where I want it to be. Obviously, we're going to do the out. That's, that's also going to take a few minutes. Okay, so I'm going to blow dry everything just because there's a bunch of little wet glazes all over the place. So... Okay, so let me see, answer your question here. I'm gonna uh, get some white, we'll do a little bit of white glaze for hair. So let's put some white uh, glaze fluid and take some white paint and mix this together. It's always a little tricky to know exactly how 
how white that is, but we'll see very shortly here. Um, hand is sticking to some of these glazes it drives me crazy so I was try to kind of hover over top there are uh, sticks that that uh, artists will use for this type of thing let's put a bit of white in these eyebrows Interesting. Donna responded saying a masterpiece is what sticks. It's kind of true. Um, it's interesting how tastes have changed. Like there's people that were masters in, or, or that were celebrated as the greatest living artists of their time and who are largely forgotten today. And you know, uh, you know, you know, or the other way, Van Gogh is often the example of an artist who was forgotten during his time or not even known during his time and is now seen as like one of the greatest, right? Um, that might be okay. For, let, let's uh, let's move on. Uh, I'll just keep that nose kind of little pop right there. Okay, so this glass. going to kind of outline a little bit of it, not the whole thing.
Okay. So you see I'm using a, a I'm glazing this glass to get some subtlety. I'm gonna put even more basically just go right into my white now. do the best job shaping this. jacket there. Like, I, is this, is this some, like, something dripping out of his lip? I think that's what that is. Now, I'm, as I'm looking at it, I'm like, maybe it's something, some fluid slowly dripping out of his lip there. He's having so much of a, a good time. That's, I think, if I was to bet on that, I'd bet you that's... Coming back with a little bit more white there. bit of highlights on his knuckles here. I am tempted to do a little bit more. Let's just take a look. I, I mean, I think I'm pretty much. It's time just to do the the outline around the outside. Let's do that. Uh, otherwise, I'm just going to be here forever. I mean, I'm really happy with how all this turned out. So. I guess I'll just mix that same color. It's basically a peachy color 
that he's using for that outside. So let's. Uh, we might have to do a couple coats of this. So might as well make a bigger batch. Um, let's see. Yeah, I need a little bit more. Okay. So I'm gonna. T where should we mix this? Maybe right down here. So I'll take this warm blue. Lots of warm yellow. So we got a green, and then lots of warm red. out of the brush. Probably should use a smaller brush to do that. And then let's take this white. How are we doing? Ah, we need to go much lighter. So much that I'm just going to take the color I've mixed and we're going to put it, mix it in a different place. Just mix it right here. Not bad. If anything, I just need maybe a bit more warm yellow on there. Let's just see. to get a little bit sharper lines around the edges here. Isn't it always the case that just that stuff happens right at the end? Josh, I still haven't answered your question. I'm just mentally <laughs> um, maxed out a bit here, so I'm what makes a masterpiece a masterpiece. Funny that like something like this tends to I feel like requires more brain power than anything else in the video. Thus far. I 
drives me crazy. I didn't mix quite enough paint. I might have to do another layer. I love, the look of this guy is, is pretty funny, or at least on mine, like, less so on his, is a little bit like he's, he's pretty, he's had a few drinks, and it's like, Cornelius Craighoff comes up and is like, hey, um, mind if I paint your portrait? And he's like, oh, sure, uh, sure, uh, what do I, what do I gotta do? Oh, you just gotta sit there and keep drinking. Oh, really? Really? Oh, okay. Well, uh, maybe I'll have another one. Um, are you buying? Uh, sure, yeah. Drinks on me. Oh, really? Okay. Well, how many portraits do you need? Oh, just the one? Oh, well, I'm happy to be here all day long. I'll, I'll sit in as many portraits as you need. You're going to buy me drinks? I'll, let's just, let's do this. It is a little bit transparent in some places. I don't know if I mind that so much. I feel like I need to darken over his shoulder. There's a little ambiguity as to what is happening. And I find I've, I, I've done that a few times lately. Even just in yesterday's painting, the shoulder being... Um, so let's... Dark glaze. I think I'm actually even going to take this and just go even a bit darker. Oh, how did I miss this? Hmm. I wonder, is that a problem? Do I mind that color being there? That's an odd thing. Well, that's what I was saying, Donna. It doesn't he doesn't look like he's drooling? I didn't think of it now that now it's, it's funny. That's ex it's exactly what it is. It's, I've been looking at this painting for what three hours, and didn't put one and one together. When in some ways it's like it's so obvious. Um, maybe I'm just gonna glaze this area, darken it. I don't know if I'm gonna have <laughs> the this fluid dripping off his chin as uh, 
as uh, it is in the original, despite how funny that is to me. But um, let's, let's see. I feel like I just need a little bit more depth to that hat. I think it looks okay in in person. It's getting a little blown out on, on this camera, I think. Maybe even needs to go just a bit darker right in that corner edge. I think my guy is a little bit younger than the original. Let's just actually let's look at him zoom in. And then I'm gonna call it a day. I think I'm done painting. <laughs> I still think that drip is funny. I'm not gonna put it in there, but anybody else is welcome to. I think I'm just because I'm just done. I'm gonna move on and I've got bath time about to start here for our daughter. If I was to do a few more things, I might just tidy up a little glaze. And right now, the, the wisps on the hair are a little bit simplified, but um, yeah, I think I got most of it in there. The cup is a little rudimentary as well, but only so much you can do in a short amount of time. Obviously, he would have been able to rock that out. Probably, he probably made this painting faster than I did. I'm, and I could still paint a little bit more on it, right? Uh, it's, there we go. Um, okay, I feel good about that. Let's. Um, I'm just gonna wrap up here, and I know. Uh, you were talk you asked a little bit about what makes a masterpiece a masterpiece josh uh, the people have written phd theses about that people have written um in, there's there's probably hundreds of books written about like what makes a masterpiece i was just at the library earlier today and saw a few um along that same lines um <clears throat> I, and you know, honestly, there's so many different reasons we could go on and on and on. It's it's almost worth a separate video that I could uh, uh, maybe when I get my dry erase board should be arriving tomorrow night. I think um, you know a lot of it has to. It, it's the same sort of thing. Like what makes a hit pop song, or what makes um, an athlete amazing? What makes you know, a, a great novel considered to be a classic. What makes great, um, you know, a, a dancer to be among the greatest ever? What makes a movie worthy of an Academy Award for Best Picture? Uh, the, I mean, sometimes it just has to do with, like, being in the right place at the right time. And 
using the materials in a way that no one else has used the materials. Um, you know, I could think of like Andy Warhol would be an example of someone who, I, th I mean, I think he was an incredible artist, but I think he was also very lucky to be where he was at that particular point in time. His interest in popular culture happened to be at a time where, you know, mass media was really, you know, becoming what it is today. And he just happened, just like lightning happened all at once. The stars aligned for him. You know, would he have been a, a, a famous painter 20 years before or 100 I, I probably not he was very talented maybe he would have found a way but it, uh, the circumstances were, were in his favor so time and, and again like maybe 200 years from now no one will even know who Andy Warhol is it's entirely possible uh, what else could I um You know, also things like paint, the who you're painting is a big thing, or, or what it is you're painting, the subject matter. You know, like the paintings we have of Napoleon, for instance. And I know, Josh, you painted a few Napoleon pictures, right? So you're probably interested in, in him. You know, Napoleon lived before photography. He was this infamous character, this personality that was shorter but larger than life. And really, the paintings are all we have of him. And because he was the emperor, uh, he was able to commission the greatest living artists in France at the time. So you have Jacques-Louis David, and uh, uh, to, you know, as his court painter. And so that kind of helps. Like, if you were the emperor and you could commission make somebody on threat of death make a great movie about you while well, you could use Steven Spielberg and you'd put Brad Pitt and you'd, you'd bring all the best people and they would probably make something hopefully pretty good. Um, so the so power, the who 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 um, it is of it makes a big difference. A huge thing that is maybe not talked about so much but is who buys it? like who owns it and the provenance of an artwork makes a big difference some say that's a you know a big problem in today's art world is that you have you know very very wealthy people speculating on art and they're buying big you know they have people helping them buy their paintings and sometimes those people are friends of the artists and there's all these backroom deals and relationships and you have somebody that that is basically in obscurity you have somebody buy you know it's happened to a couple of my friends um i can think of a, where one of my friends we used to share a studio together this very very wealthy collector from england uh bought everything in his studio for a million dollars and um Instantly, he became very well known. Obviously, because people are like, "What? Who is this person?" I mean, there was a, obviously a number of us knew who he was, and he was he had exhibited it. He had a, a history. It didn't come out of nowhere, but he certainly wasn't known all over the world. And that creates, you know, all of a sudden elevated him to another place, and uh, and all of a sudden other people are like, "Oh, I got to get one of those because if he's got one, I got to get one," and the prices are skyrocketing. Um, I mean, yeah, there's so many different uh, things. And we haven't even talked about beauty and quality and all those other things, right? And uh, which is, again, uh, we say in, in the eye of the beholder, and sometimes that's true. Tastes change. You know, the ideas of what constitute beauty have changed quite radically over time. I mean, and if they hadn't, why we would still be looking at uh, like panel paintings from the Middle Ages, right? Because obviously people thought those were really beautiful at one point. Now it's not like we're doing that. It's not what you see uh, being done. So people's people were like, ah, I kind of like that, but I, I like this much better, right? So uh, yeah, it's there's. Uh, that's a that's a great question it's been debated by people for I'm sure you could go all the way back to 
I mean, there's probably Plato and Aristotle. You know, there's a <laughs> a dialogue about that. I, perhaps I, I'm not quite sure, but I'm, it wouldn't surprise me. Um. Okay. Did I, I thought I saw something? Um. Oh, Donna was saying, I feel a lot better today. A lot more energy, uh, as what Paula said. So, yeah, it's, that's great to hear that you're doing better, Donna. I'm really excited. It's great to hear that you're, you know, you're here in the chat, following along all day. That makes me happy to hear that you're on the road to recovery. And um, hopefully you'll be back painting with us soon. Donna says, I don't think I'll be here tomorrow. Going to Fox Creek with my son. The only time I left the house all week was to the hospital, which is a bummer. Yeah. Um, so uh, let's. I'm going to wrap up today. Thank you so much. We're going to be painting another Cornelius Craighoff painting tomorrow, a portrait of Jerry, which I think is a really fun painting. It's of his dog, and uh, we haven't done. It's been almost a year since we did a painting of a dog, or even an animal, or really. I got to think about that. I'm sure we've done an animal since then. I try to do that. Uh, so that's going to be kind of fun. We're painting a dog painted by an artist who lived 150 or plus years ago. So their depictions of what animals looked like and dogs were a little bit different. Uh, it's still a very playful, fun painting, and we'll have lots of fun painting it. And that's why I'm also reserving it for our Tuesday class as opposed to this one. Because I think people love dogs. I, mean, I love dogs. Okay. Thanks, everyone, for painting along with me. Be sure to like the video before you leave today. Hit the subscribe button if you're new to the channel. And uh, if you want to leave a donation, there's a PayPal link in the description below. If you want to send a check or money order, hit me up through the Facebook page or my website. The links are down there. We'll see you tomorrow, everybody. Good afternoon, good evening, good morning, wherever you are. Bye-bye.